The last presentation in this session is by Michał Poniatowski, a lecturer at the Faculty of Canon Law at the Cardinal Stefan Wyszyński University in Warsaw, as well as an attorney. He is also a member of the board of the Polish Society of Law and Religion. The subject of his research are law and religion, law relating to the activities of non-governmental organizations, as well as selected issues of criminal, civil, and administrative law. His talk is entitled Religious Symbols in the Public Sphere in Jurisprudence of the European Court of Human Rights. Michał, please proceed. And thank you, Professor Stanis, uh, for giving me a floor. I'm so glad to see you and and uh, the other speakers, uh, and I wish to congratulate uh, to all speakers on the very interesting lectures. Of course, uh, I would like to thank you, uh, Ferenc Mardi Institute, for inviting me uh, to this conference. Uh, congratulations on the idea, organization, and implementation of this. Having several minutes, I plan my speech to consist uh, of the following uh, parts. Point one, introduction. Point two, the convention in European legal culture. Then, general principles of religious freedom regarding religious symbols formulated by the court. And then, if I have the time, I will uh, show you uh, some general things in uh, examples of cases. And at the very end, I will try to present general conclusion of harbors of uh, jurisdiction by the court. And for me, general question, I'm attorney, is what is the key of this jurisdiction? Point one, introduction. So the history of most modern European countries is related to Christianity. For this reason, the use of religious symbols in public space is not a novelty. It is even an element of the tradition of many European countries. The manifestation of religious symbols in the public space also results from religious freedom in its individual aspect. Please look at this. The essence of religious freedom is the possibility of manifesting it. Before Edict of Milan at 313, however, a Christian used it in the public space religious symbols such as the famous symbol of it is fish symbol. Such symbols are therefore prior to the symbol used in the public space by the state. Bearing in mind historical outline, it is therefore not surprising that religious freedom is not only guaranteed by the convention. And now the point about European convention in legal, European legal culture. So one of the foundation of uh, this culture is Christian text. Both in the historical and the present aspect, religious freedom has been and is recognized in many normative acts. For example, in a history way, the Polish Confederation of Warsaw of 1573 or the Spanish dispute in Valladolid of 1570, 71 itself. Currently, religious freedom is protected by multilateral and bilateral international agreements, for example, concordance. At the same time, religious freedom is protected by the constitutional law and religious law in individual states. So, conclusion is convention is not exclusive and is one of many sources of law in Europe. The convention recognized only the axiology shaped for many centuries. So this is so important to interpretation in historical way, in system way of uh, these uh, judgments. At this point, it is worth referring to national law, which was presented uh, in one of the judgments of the court. An example of the use of religious symbols by private entities uh, is the wearing of religious symbols in workplace. As for the countries of Council of Europe, it is not legally regulated in most countries. 
except for three countries, Turkey, Ukraine, and some cantons in Switzerland. On the other hand, uh, an example of the use of religious symbols by the public entities is the placement of religious symbols in the public schools classroom. Such symbols are prohibited by law in Macedonia, France, and Georgia. We look at these uh, countries and we find uh, a model of separate between state and, um, and uh, church. So a short conclusion about this part are most people in Europe live in religious countries. Then there is a lack of consensus of relationship between the state and the church. There is a pluralism of these relations. There are no detailed regulation or religious symbols and there is a large role of jurisprudence. Now, general principles concerning religious freedom with respect to religious symbols in the jurisdiction of the court. This principle relates to the three issues, religious freedom, non-discrimination, and the rights to education. It is worth presenting a few important pieces of the court in this regard. Religious freedom, Article 9. In the jurisprudence of the court, the substantive aspect is prior to the resolution of given case. As regards the presence of religious symbols in public space, the key starting point seems to be Article 9 of the Convention. So religious freedom is the cornerstone of democracy. Another thesis, religious freedom is first on individual aspect. Not every act is a manifestation. Very important is personal aspect of this manifestation. Countries have margin of decision whether and to what extent an interference is necessary. And the last thing uh, for me very important is to keep a balance of interest. Non-discrimination. Prohibition does not exist independently. And court says that uh, interpretation requires a systemic approach. And the last one, rights to education. Educational pluralism is necessary for protection of a democrat democratic sorry, society. We need systemic interpretation. Moreover, any indoctrination is strictly prohibited in this jurisdiction. And partial conclusion of this part. There is a pattern, recognition of dignity and religious freedom in, in individual and then institutional aspect. Religious freedom under Article 9 is the starting point. Religious freedom is the foundation of the democratic society. Religious freedom is a fundamental right. The need for a systematic interpretation. There is a pluralism of relations. And at the end, I will go to the examples of cases. And I choose uh, two cases, case of Mrs. Aweida, and then, of course, uh, Lao Tzu case. Uh, first, uh, I will go to uh, Aweida case. Of course, circumstances of this case, uh, I think, is uh, known to everybody uh, at this conference, so I will go now to the state of actual facts in this case. In the state of the facts, this is a beta and Chaplin cases, we can find common traits and the differences. Common traits are Christian faith, very important employment before the work uniform rules change in the company, the will to wear religious symbols, proposing a different job position, permission to wear religious symbols by the other believers, rising the allegation of discrimination based on religious beliefs, and the differences. First, employment in a private and public entity, and then prohibition of wearing religious symbols due to the company's image and safety of the company patients. And now, some things about argument, arguments uh, of the uh, parties. Several dispute uh, issues can be found in the arguments of the parties. 
First, the wearing of cross is obligation or not? Second, does the possibility of changing jobs exclude the possibility of violating the convention? And then, in addition, there is also a dispute on the question of proportional authority. Legal argumentation of the court. And the court uh, give us uh, very important things. First of all, it is necessary to determine what the act is. Wearing a cross may be a manifestation of religious beliefs in the form of worship, practice, and ritual activities as such is protected. If so, the refusal of the work permit was an interference with the right to manifest religion. Therefore, it must be determined whether the right to manifest one's beliefs was sufficiently uh, secured under the domestic legal order. Then, essence of this judgment. In the case uh, at hand, the right balance was not struck between the right to manifest one's faith and the employer's willingness to build the company's image. A healthy democratic society must tolerate pluralism. On the other hand, in the case of Mrs. Chaplin, the essence of judgment was again to examine a measure taken. In the case Mrs. Chaplin, the reason for limiting the wearing religious symbols was to protect the health and safety of nurses and, and patients. So the very important things is look for good balance between rights. And partial conclusion, it does no matter if wearing religious symbols is obligation or not. The possibility of finding another job does not exclude the possibility of violating religious freedom. There is a gradation of reason for limitation and there is an obligation to keep in this area. And last C case, uh, we have don't uh, we don't have a lot of time, so maybe general conclusion uh, in Grand Chamber. Uh, the presence of the cross is a decision in the field of upbringing and teaching. The cross is a religious symbol. So there is no evidence that the presence of the cross can somehow affect students. In the court view, this is the decision to preserve tradition falls within the response a state's margin of appreciation. The court is obliged to take into account the great diversity of states, including the sphere of cultural and histor historical uh, development. And general conclusion. In my opinion, the key uh, to this uh, jurisdiction are margin of decision and good balance of rights. And this key, we should put into pluralism we have sources in dignity. Thank you for your for your attention. Thank you, Michal, for your presentation concerning the case law of the Schlesburg Court about religious symbols. Mm -hmm.